So today I'm going to get you up and running with Sega Saturn using RetroArch. So what I'm going to do is show you which files you need, uh, game extension files, BIOS files. I'm going to cover some video settings to try and get you the best performance possible and the best look. So check this video out. <laughs> Okay, so before I start this setup guide today, if you like what you see, do hit notifications, subscribe and like. It will get you up to date content as I upload it for RetroArch, LaunchBox, RetroBat, Batacera and even Raspberry Pi emulation that I cover nowadays on my channel. So what we're going to do first is take a little brief look at the BIOS files that you're going to need. So I've got three just here and these are going to be fine for running American or European Sega Saturn games. And there's a couple of additional files that you might need if you're looking at running Japanese games or a couple of particular ROM games such as King of Fighters. But I'll leave a link in my description which will take you to the Libretro website where you can see for yourself which files that is. So we got three here and these are going to work fine. And next up, I got a Saturn game in my Saturn folder, and this is Bug. And you'll notice this is in a .chd file extension. So Beatles Saturn will accept a few different file extension types. Again, link will be in my description, but very briefly, it will run .bin.q files. But I always recommend .chd. .bin and .q files can be a little bit over the place. And you can have lots of those files for that file extension format. Uh, .chd also compresses your games to save you space on your hard drive. So we've got that cleared and out of the way. So next thing I'm going to do is if I just head over to the RetroArch shortcut, right click on it, open file location. And this is going to take us direct into where RetroArch is installed. Now we need to go to the system folder here and this is where our BIOS files are going to go. So what I'm going to do is just highlight all three of these and just drag and drop into my RetroArch system folder and that's about it. Now for now my Saturn game is just going to stay put in its folder on my desktop. So let's just open up RetroArch now I'm using a PS3 wired controller here for this and what I'm going to do first is help you download your core for Sega Saturn. So to do this you need to be a main menu and if you just go down to online updater, core downloader and what cores are is kind of like an emulator but a very small version of it which are designed just for RetroArch. So we'll see once we scroll down to S we're going to come into Sega. Now you'll see hashtags on the right hand side. This means that they've been installed and downloaded. So what I'm going to do is just go through this process. I'm going to treat this like it's your first time and I'm going to just press my X button on Saturn Beetle Saturn. And you will get a hashtag come up once you've downloaded and installed it. So let's back out of here. And what we're going to do first is just actually test this if my bug game is going to run. So to do this, I'm going to go to load content, which is also in main menu. And if I go to my C drive and locate my bug game, which is under user since it's on my desktop, and then just find the name of your computer. In my case, it's Jamie. And desktop is just here. And my Sega Saturn bug game is in my Saturn folder on my desktop. So go into there and here it is bug. So the next part you're going to see is suggested cores. Now this can be a bit of a mixed bag sometimes as you can see. RetroArch is suggesting I run this with random cores such as Commodore Amiga. But I'm going to just scroll down and look for my Beatles Saturn core. If I press on this... That's now going to boot up with my bug game using Beetle Saturn. And 
So as we can see, bug is working just fine. So what I'm going to show you next is actually how to import this into RetroArch. So to get to the quick menu that I've just accessed, I've just pressed my PS button on my PS3 controller. And if I press circles back out of here, what I'm going to do is just go down to import content. And you'll notice I've already got a Saturn tab below at the bottom on the left, but I'm going to show you how to do this from scratch. So we need to go to scan directory, C drive, and now you need to locate where your Saturn games are located. And again, as we know, these are on my desktop. So I'm going to go to users again, and the name of my computer is Jamie, and we're going to find desktop and Saturn. Now we need to scan this directory. And as you can see, it's now scanned and directory has now been scanned completely. So let's back out of this. And I'm pressing circle to go back to the main section. And your Saturn games are then going to appear at the bottom, just like mine has. And here we go. So we're going to just quickly come out of this. And I always recommend under main menu, go into configuration file and save current configuration. We don't want to do all this and find out that it's saved nothing. So just do this just to be on the side of caution. So let's back out of here again. So we're just going to close bug down and you can close your game down by going to quick menu and close content. And that's going to take us back to the main RetroArch interface. So what I'm going to do next is go to online updater. And I'm going to download some cover art for this. So under Online Updater, if you scroll to the bottom, Playlist Thumbnail is Updater, Sega Saturn. And if we back out of here, by will send Circle and go back down to Bug. We can now see we've got a bit of gameplay image here going on, which looks pretty cool if you've got several games. And what I'm going to do next is look at some video settings. So what I'm going to do is actually launch my game again. So go back down to Saturn, Bug. And I'm also going to set the core association for this one. So to do this, I'm going to make sure this is selected to Beatle Saturn. And once we set this core association, your game will automatically launch with Beatle Saturn rather than getting the suggested cores that we seen just a minute ago. So let's run this again. And once we got the gameplay going, I'm going to go into video configs. So we got our game running and typically it's very pixelated. It's a 90s, mid 90s, 32 bit game as to be expected. Now, let me just remind you that on this core, we can save states and load states. So I'm going to just save state just here and save state. And if I go back to quick menu, load state. And as you can see, that's now loaded back where I saved it from. So I'm pressing circle to come back out. If I go to settings and scroll up to video, what I'm going to do is go down to scaling first. I'm going to put integer scaling on, and that's going to make our image look a bit smaller, but it's going to look a lot nicer. And after I've turned integer scale on, I'm going to go to aspect ratio. And what I'm going to do with this one is just make sure this is selected as custom. Come back out of here. I'm going to go down to bilinear filtering, and that's going to reset. And let's go back into bug. So quick menu, resume. <laughs> now, as you can see, that's a hell of a lot smaller, but it's not so pixelated. So just check this one again. Now, if we go back into quick menu, settings again, and video, if we go back down to scaling, I can change this again. So I'm going to turn off integer scaling, and I'm going to go down to aspect ratio and put this on full. So as you can see, there's many different options of how to manipulate your Saturn games to make them look the, the way you want them to look. So it's always going to be the best bet is to go to settings, video, and down to scaling. And, you know, you've got your aspect ratio there and also integer scale. 
So we'll try this again. And like you can see, I've just turned this to on. <laughs> And if I just go back in the quick menu, I'm going to briefly show you how to swap games. Say you've got a game with two discs, just go to disc control, which you can find under quick menu. And what we're going to do, say I'm playing a two disc game here, is just eject disc. And what I'm going to do is just go to load new disc. Then we're going to come to this screen and this is where you can select disc two of your game. And at that point, you're going to have a current disc index, and that's going to list your second game as well as your first game disc. So that's it for today's Retro Arch and Sega Saturn setup guide. I hope I got you up and running and everything's working okay for you. Like I said at the start of my video today, if you like what you see, just hit notifications and also be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future content for Retro Arch and beyond. It also helps my channel a great deal. Also be sure to follow me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and TikTok. And just to remind you that I've also got a membership option here on my YouTube channel, where if there's a specific video or setup guide you want me to do, that's included in one of the perks, which is the next level perk. But until next time, stay retro.